Our group over the past several years has done a lot of research looking at one of the white blood cells that you have, they're called neutrophils, that normally play a beneficial role in fighting off infection and keeping you healthy. But in the context of patients with cancer, they can assume a pretty dangerous role. The projects right now that we're doing focus on trying to understand how neutrophils play a role and make cancer advance more aggressively or more rapidly, and what can we do to prevent that from happening. We're learning more and more that they may play an important role in to how some patients may respond to immunotherapy and why, why some patients don't. So immunotherapy is a, is a hot topic. Everyone's working on it. It was the subject of the Nobel Prize this past year. And the reason is that it's literally doubled the survival of a lot of patients with stage four cancers, whether it's melanoma or lung cancer or bladder cancers. And um, the molecules that uh, these Nobel Prize winning scientists discovered are the molecules by which a lot of cancers will, will put our immune system to sleep and they've developed drugs that focus on these, on what they're, they're called checkpoint inhibitors. And when we, we give these drugs, it wakes up the immune system and allows it to use all of the millions of years of evolution that, that they have in their armamentarium to go and, and kill the cancer cell. And they do so very, very effectively. Uh, in many, many patients. We're starting to look towards a time where maybe the operations aren't, aren't necessary. Patients can preserve their lungs. They won't have to deal with the pain of the operation and the potential risks of it. So uh, there's no question that it's an exciting time and uh, figuring it, all this stuff out won't be simple, but it's, uh, it's very promising. So one of my personal interests are um, rare thoracic tumors particularly tumors of the mediastinum. And one of the problems with rare tumors is that we don't know how to treat them very well because they don't come along that often. And so to try and get past that limitation, we are doing something in the lab that I think is exciting and that's very novel. So what we do is at the time of surgery, we will take tissue from the tumor and we'll grow live cancer cells in the lab from that patient. These are called patient-derived organoids, and they're thought to very effectively recapitulate the disease process that, that is going on in your patient right now. But it affords us two opportunities. The first opportunity is that we can check the genetics of that cancer, and that can help us choose drugs, so it can educate our decision on which drugs to try. But more importantly is we can try those drugs on those cells that we took out of that person. You can try 5, 10, 15, 20. There's no real limit to how many drugs you can try and find a solution. You know, you could find a drug that works. And if you find some drugs that work, you in theory could apply them back to that person. Um, that's something that's extremely new. And it's something that's extremely exciting. So it saves a lot of time. Uh, it saves the person a lot of potential suffering um, because you don't have to go through toxic drugs that may or may not work. So I heard from one of my mentors a long time ago that we don't do research as an intellectual exercise. Okay, we do it because they're patients at the end of the day that, that need treatment. And that's, that's the philosophy that we have in this laboratory too. So all of the work that we do is applied. And the goal is to develop treatments that we can apply in the clinic sooner rather than later. I chose to work at the MUHC for a number of reasons. Um, I think probably the most important one is the focus or the commitment to research. I don't think I can stress enough uh, how important the community's support is to help us carry on this research. You know, what a hospital typically provides or can generally provide is, is standard of care, what is good enough. And we're striving for the best we can possibly do, or excellence, essentially. For us to be able to do that for our patients, the foundation support, the community support, is absolutely necessary, and I can't stress that enough. All hospitals and universities offer promising candidates uh, recruitment packages now, and without that, it's hard for us to continue to recruit the brightest minds. So there is no question to have the best and the brightest. We need that as an incentive. But the reason bright minds want those incentives is because they need those dollars to allow their creativity to go to work. We've made an enormous progress and uh, philanthropies played a huge role in terms of getting us as far as we have come. Thank you so much for all your support. None of this would be possible without you.